we're finally ready to see how we can use these eigenfunctions of a differential operator in order to get a solution in terms of a series expansion of a differential equation. This goes back to a technique that we introduced in chapter 2 for solving a system of linear algebraic equations a u equals b if a was symmetric. In that case the eigenvectors were or could be made to be mutually orthogonal and they formed a very convenient basis for expressing the solution vector as well as the right-hand side vector in order to write the solution as a linear combination of those basis vectors. Here we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to follow the same four-step procedure that we did there to now solve differential equations using the eigenfunctions of the differential operator from the differential equation. So let's see how those details work. So we start with our differential equation, LU is equal to F. So L is the differential operator, it's linear, it's also self-adjoint. This is a new term uh, that I'm introducing. We'll talk more about this in a later video and define what it means and how we check for it. But the differential operator has to be self-adjoint. It's essentially analogous to our A matrix being symmetric, as we'll see. We're going to walk through those same four steps that we did in Chapter 2 for solving A u equals B using the eigenvectors of A as basis vectors for the solution. We're going to do exactly the same thing here. So the first step is to take your differential operator L and extract it out of the differential equation and form its eigenproblem. So remember, the eigenproblem itself is a differential equation, but it's not the original differential equation we want to solve. It's determined from the differential operator from the original equation. So we have L u sub n is equal to lambda sub n u sub n. So that's our differential eigenproblem. And we'll solve that to get the eigenvalues as well as the eigenfunctions of our differential operator. There'll be an infinity of them because it's an infinite dimensional function space. The second step then will be to take the right-hand side function f and write that as a linear combination of these basis functions, the eigenfunctions of the differential operator. We'll have these coefficients a sub n hat. These, it's the same notation we used in chapter 2 for the, the parallel case. The way you obtain the a sub n hats is to take this expression, take the inner product on both sides with the eigenfunctions u sub n of our differential equation. And here's what that does. Remembering that u sub n are all mutually orthogonal because of the self-adjoint nature of our differential operator, as we'll see later on, all of those inner products, every single inner product in this infinite sum is zero except for the one term where you have the inner product of a function with itself, un with itself. All the other terms are zero. That just produces a sub n hat on the right-hand side. So a sub n hat is then equal to the inner product of f, the function that we have on the right-hand side of our differential equation, with the corresponding eigenfunction u sub n. All right, so that's step two, and that is an expression of our right-hand side function f of x in an infinite expansion in terms of our eigenfunctions of the differential operator. The next step is to do the same thing, but now for the solution of the differential equation, which is u of x. So we write u of x as a linear combination of all the eigenfunctions u sub n of x. We have the coefficients in the linear combination. Those are the a sub n's, again, using the same notation as in chapter 2. So let's substitute this expression for u of x into our differential equation. So we have the differential operator L operating on our infinite expansion in terms of the eigenfunctions is equal to f of x expressed as a linear combination of those same eigenfunctions. And again, we know what a sub n hat is. We'll take that into account in a moment. I'm not gonna do anything on the right-hand side. It just comes along for the ride. On the left-hand side, we can take the L inside the sum. So we have the sum of the a sub n's times L operating on u. But from the differential eigenproblem, L u sub n is lambda n u sub n. And so now this expression here, we can use to get the a sub n coefficients. Because in order for these two to be equal, the coefficients of each of the eigenfunctions on both sides of the equation have to match. So that means a sub n lambda sub n has to be equal to a sub n hat for all n. So therefore, solving for a sub n, which we don't know, that's a sub n hat divided by lambda. But a sub n hat, well, that's just the inner product of f with u sub n. 
All right, so that's an expression now for a sub n. So that brings us to the fourth step, which is to put together the final solution in terms of this eigenfunction expansion of the differential operator. So our final solution, u, is now equal to a sub n, which is the inner product of f with u sub n over lambda sub n times each of the u sub n's. And we just add up all these terms for each of the n's. Now let's take a little bit closer look at what we just did. In principle, you could use any complete set of functions. We could use the Legendre polynomials, for example. We could use a Fourier series, if we'd like, to express f and to express u. But the reason why we use the eigenfunctions was so that this last step worked in this derivation. So that allowed us to go from the differential operator operating on u sub n to setting that equal to lambda sub n u sub n. So it's the special property of the eigenfunctions that allows us to do that. No other set of functions would allow us to make that final step. Now just as in the algebraic case in chapter 2, the bulk of the work here is in step 1, getting the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of our differential operator. Steps 2, 3, and 4 are very straightforward, and in fact we've already done all the work. So step 1 is really where most of the work lies. Once again, what we're doing is using the eigenfunctions of the differential operator as basis functions for expressing the right-hand side function f of x, as well as the solution u of x. Again, very much the same way that we did in chapter 2 for a u is equal to b. I'm going to illustrate the process of getting the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions using an example. Normally this is kind of dangerous to use an example to, to introduce a method because it's easy to get bogged down in the details and lose sight of the big picture. To remind us of that, I love this uh, picture. This is from the Wall Street Journal a few years ago. And it's talking about wearable technology for, for children, for infants. And so you can see this child here wearing this uh, onesie with these sensors on it. And the idea, of course, is that, you know, your parent, you can be somewhere else and using your phone, you can remotely monitor the vital signs and so forth of your, of your infant. But if you look at this picture closely, uh, you can see there's a bigger problem. So we're monitoring these functions remotely, that's all great, and the technology's amazing. But you should really not be putting your infant on the floor behind a desk where there's a myriad of electrical cables and heavy computer equipment up on desks that they can grab and pull down. So in that spirit, I'm going to look at an example to illustrate the basic approach, how to get the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. On the first pass through, focus on the big picture, one, two, three, four steps, and don't get bogged down in the details. You can look at the details later and, and sort that out.